writing a good script or finding a great character or uncovering an incredible story that needs to be told is in many ways the easy part. The question isn't how or if you can make an amazing film or an amazing show. The real question is, how do you actually get an audience to watch it? In many ways, it's about creating a product. And I think it's important to look at it this way. Films and television are commissioned art. And that's honestly what I love so much about this industry. It is the pure mesh of art and, 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 and commerce coming together. You've got an art form that uses picture, sound, and story, merging all those art forms together that's mass distributed to everyone on the planet through every means of media. And I love the challenge of being able to find how we can take a new story or a new character and working through all that mess to try to refine story gold. First thing you need to think about for your idea is format and genre. Is your story scripted or unscripted? Is it fiction or nonfiction? Is it more of a single event story that could live in a, in a feature length? Or is it more of a serialized episodic story? Within that, you can have a drama, a thriller, a romance, a comedy, or on the other side, you can have a docudrama, a limited series. There's so many different formats, and it's really important when you're trying to get something commissioned or acquired to try to pinpoint where it fits in to the overall content landscape. The next thing you need to be thinking about immediately is financing. Is it self-funded? Is it going to be commissioned? Is it going to be financed and then acquired? Are you looking for someone to pay for the whole thing, to green light development money, production money, and distro money, and marketing money? Or are you just looking to run outside with the camera, start filming, and figure it out later? Commission projects are going to be where a network or a large studio wants to front the bill and pay for an original piece of content. They're gonna have a lot of partners involved from the network or studio side, and then also from the production team and filmmaking side. In many cases, it intertwines and everyone's trying to fill different roles. This is art by committee. Commissioned art is art by committee, period. If you're looking to run off and make your screenplay with your drama, romance, thriller, slash comedy, and you're a first-time director or a first-time storyteller, be prepared to give it all away. If a network or a studio is going to commission a new piece of original content, they are gonna be treating that like their baby. They are literally funding it, they're raising it, they're gonna have input on it, they're gonna have a very specific vision for what it needs to be. You, as now one of many creators on the project, need to approach all of your work that goes into it with that lens. In an acquired model, you have already half-baked the idea. You have put some financing into it, you have produced some of it, you have been able to grow the idea and actually create a package of intellectual property. It doesn't have to be fully baked. Sometimes it will be. Sometimes you'll be done with the film and now you're looking for a partner to come and acquire it. But you can sell that idea, your IP, at any stage. There's a big common misconception that everyone's looking to green light stories or that there's lots of money available for specific genres and formats. Uh, it's just not the case. I can't tell you how many people have come up with their story and their character and they're saying, this is amazing. This has to get done, it hasn't been done before. I've got so-and-so attached, we've got access to this. We can follow them, it's gonna be great. The fact is, is that there's so much junk out there. It's like one big content goulash that networks and commissioning bodies and financiers are, are being hypercritical with what they're funding. Your story has to be gold. In, in some cases, it doesn't matter who's attached or who the access is with, it just doesn't hold up. I think that you need to spend the bulk of your time refining and curating a bulletproof business plan and audience. Spend more time thinking about audience and where it's going than the actual story itself. development phase is where you can actually start to have some fun again. And this is where you're going to really put the entire package together. That can look like attaching talent both on and off screen. 
most scripted projects need talent attached or some idea of, of, of attaching a particular talent. All studios and finances are going to look for that. And then you've also got off-screen talent that could be a director, an executive producer, a well-known writer, um, someone who is established in making things that are successful in the industry. And if you're not going to be attaching talent on or off screen, that just means that your story, your characters, your proof of concept, the financing that you are already bringing needs to be that much more solid. If you don't market and you don't get in front of people and you can't advertise your story and your message, your film, your series, there's no point in making it. You've got to be thinking strategically about marketing. And it doesn't all have to be on your shoulders, but you do need to be considering it and thinking forward about it. If you're doing a commission project for a network or a studio, the good news is that they have marketing teams and have a good system as to how to go about getting new eyeballs and new audience for the project. But you still have to get out on the streets and hustle. If you are self-funding and self-distributing, you need to take a hard look at doing paid media to reach new audience and new eyes. Regardless of how this was distributed and who bought and who funded, I think it's really important for you to market and to push this new story. That can look like filmmaker behind the work series. It could be podcasts and interviews. You could go and make supplemental content about your story, whether it's an origins piece or a doc about the story that inspired your script. You've gotta think that way and you've got to market that way. It's going to help your end goal, which is more eyes, more audience on your project. This is 100% a team sport, especially when you're dealing with big networks, um, large brands. You're never going to be going alone. You're always going to be going with other people. We tend to lose sight of the fact that this is commissioned art, and this is, by and large, a service-based industry. It's a creative service-based industry. So the work that we do is in service of something else. Our art is in service of, or in service to, something else. And when we forget that, we miss an opportunity to take a team and to take a vision to a grander place. If you're not willing to let other people come into the idea and be a part of it, don't expect other people to pay for the party. There's incredible power, there's incredible value in having a very well-run and managed team. We spend tons of time talking about the why. We spend tons of time talking about what we're doing and how grand the end product is gonna be. And for some reason, we tend to skip right over the how. And we don't put as much time, and as much effort, and as much intentionality behind how we're gonna get there. And the reality is we should be judging the end result and the end product, both by the presentation of that product, but also by the process that brought it into place. Being organized when it comes to original development can literally make or break you. It's the difference between having everyone on the same team and having 10 different stories running off in different directions. When you're trying to sell your concept or get distribution, you have to know the ins and outs of who you're selling to. It's incredibly important to know what does that network or buyer need? What do they look for? What's their ethos? What does their whole thing run on? And if you can dive into their brand and speak their language, you can learn how to relate your concept to them and you have better odds of selling it through. The mandates are constantly changing and you can know their slate from the year before inside and out and they're still going to throw a curveball at you. But the whole point is to be educated. So if you're willing to dive in and do the work and do that research, it is a rolling basis. It is not a one and done, oh, they bought that. If you can look at the core of who your buyer is and figure out what they represent, there's a lot of common language then that you can insert and, and view your project from. And that's what development is. That's the entire process is naming and sorting through those pieces and finding out what's the best story here. And it's exciting and it can be really rewarding and it can be super frustrating. And in order to be successful at it, you have to step into it fully and you have to be willing to ask the hard questions and be faced with a lot of unknowns. Be okay with answering incorrectly. Again, stories change as it grows and moves forward, but you have to start somewhere. And that's what this process is. It's figuring out, okay, what's our starting point? 
and where do we want to go? And if you can have those two pictures in mind, you can start weaving in and out and filling out your entire idea. There are some concepts that are probably inherently bad, or there's some concepts that have another concept that's just like it, and if you don't realize that, it's a lot of time wasted if you go after it. Usually what makes a bad concept or a bad idea is that it doesn't have enough foundation to stand on, and you have to go through the process to figure that out. Um, there are a lot of gut calls that we make in this industry. You can look at something and if it doesn't resonate with you, it doesn't resonate with you. Again, I go back to story is subjective. What can you boil down that's measurable? And when you do that, you can kind of start seeing the flags that go off when you hit a bad idea of, mm, nothing's actually happening here, or uh, it doesn't actually know what its core idea is, or there's no relatability. A lot of times, the worst ideas are just too broad. It's not that it's a bad idea, it's that it has no direction. When you go to weed out bad ideas, it's a lot of, do I have time to figure out the direction for this? And if you do, you can kind of make it a good idea. I, I think that there's a lot of hope for a lot of projects. I also think you can lose a lot of projects if you don't put in the work to, to make them a good idea.